Okay, let's get started on today's class. Thank you everyone for coming to the live uh, live classes. I really appreciate it when you guys show up to the stream. I know that I upload the recordings uh, on YouTube after. For those who have time zone restrictions um, and school and work schedule um, overlaps, critique hour streams. But it is a live stream for those who, ha who are in the neighboring time zones, who, ha who are free during these times. I really appreciate it when you guys pop in and populate the class. It really feels like an interactive uh, back and forth dialogue, uh, which is my favorite type of teaching, as if we were together in a lecture hall. Um, the reason why I do this is because I used to teach in university every Tuesday and Thursday in a lecture hall, so I like to, I love, I got addicted to that feeling and that's why I started teaching. So because I, I love this format, it's why I continue to do it as a live stream and not a, a recording. So I know a lot of people do offline recordings and upload it back on YouTube, which is way easier than setting up a friggin' stream every single Tuesday and Thursday, especially with YouTube's new stream format, which is super annoying. But it's worth it because the feeling of a classroom is such a divine feeling. It's one of the oldest feelings on this earth, sitting together with your peers and listening to an instructor. It's addictive, and I love it. So thank you guys for coming to the, to the live streams. It means the world. A couple of announcements. I'll rush through them really quickly. I know you guys absolutely hate announcements, but they're really important. And they're part of why this community is growing and why this community is becoming more enriched. Because of the things that we do, the activities that we do um, during the seasons and the challenges that are hosted. If you want to submit your work for critique, so this isn't so much an announcement, it's just teaching people how to... Um, uh, part of the community. If you want your work up here, like the rest of these 14-day challenges and, and studies, if you want your work up, go to istabrak.com and go to the Reddit icon right here in the top right corner, and it'll take you to Reddit. Um, in the background, you'll hear my heater. That's just my heater. I'm sorry for the hum if that bothers you. Please join the Reddit. Um, the Reddit's very, very important in keeping the community, it's like basically the central hub of the community. Everything that we do goes through Reddit, from community challenges to sale announcements, everything. Any kind of changes, anything at all, contests, everything is run through Reddit. It used to be Google+, Plus, but they got shut down. Um, so now we do everything through here. There is currently a 2019 holiday challenge, last challenge of 2019, maybe second last if I do host the mini challenge in nine days I'll upload it. Um, it is a full illustration, uh, and it is, I've announced it a number of times already in the critique hour, so please go read through it. It's pinned at the top. The mini challenge that I might upload uh, next Tuesday or next Thursday, uh, I mean, t first Tuesday of December or next Thursday, or the last Thursday of December, um, will be, uh, if I do, will be announced and it'll, it'll have like 19 days a little or a little less than that to complete it. The last day we will look at all the submissions it will be the 19th of December 2019 and the first class will be on, the, on 20, uh, 2020 will be January 2nd. If it is, if not, it might be the 7th because I have friends coming over and we're doing a big Christmas bash, <laughs> I think. Um, and by the time everybody leaves, um, I think it'll, I've already have driven everyone back for the second or the first, I have no idea. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think the second was most likely going to be our first time back. If not the seventh, I'll try for the second. Okay. And then Portrait Studio is on sale. So whoever owns Portrait Studio right now, thank you everyone for purchasing it. It supports me. It supports the community. I really appreciate for you guys, um, you know, waiting on the sale and coming out and, and sharing it with all of your friends who might need it. For those who are interested in purchasing it, it's still on sale on the store. Um, and what is it? It is a reference generation software. It helps you build entire references. And I'll be using it for today's critique to help us uh, discern some of the shadow regions on the face um, and talk about them. And that's it for announcements, I believe. Oh, and if you guys want to follow me on Snapchat, please do, because I announce a lot of my critique hours throughout the day. So as I host private sessions, I like to post up the work that I did on a private session. So if I did someone's critique and I get their permission to show their work, I will upload homework if anyone's curious about what happens in private sessions and what I do with my students. Um, you can join me on Snapchat. So you just go to my Instagram page and my Snapchat is uploaded right here. And I upload a lot of my day-to-day -day fun stuff that I do, a lot of selfies, 
lots of weird little videos. <laughs> I'm kind of I'm kind of a weird person. I have many many versions of myself. I'm not schizophrenic or anything, but I have many funny things that I do throughout the day. It's a weird like daily journal. So, but if you are curious about um, uh, other students' work, I usually upload it on Snapchat. Um, if you guys want to follow me there, I haven't do, been doing a lot of snaps lately because I've been a bit sick. But um, join me on Snapchat. Let's get talking. Let's get social. Okay. <laughs> um, that's it. If you guys want to join on Patreon as well, uh, you can subscribe for a higher uh, uh, tiers where you get educational material given back. Or you can subscribe just as a watcher to help support the community and ensure its longevity and posterity. All right, let's get started on today's class. I can't wait to get my hands on this painting. Skin tones. Um, skin tones are very, very scary because um, it, from working with grayscale for so long, um, your idea of skin tones can be altered uh, by the amount of exposure you have to colored references and how long you've been working on grayscale. So the, any amount of saturation outside of grayscale to you will look like too much saturation. So you will naturally be drawn towards grays all over again. That's the danger of working with grayscale. So there's always that awkward shift back into color. It's just something that we have a little bit of uh, fun with for a while and then we step away from color and start focusing on grays and functional light on form. And it's very important and never will I ever, for a student who's suffering with their values, assign them color studies because I need to know that they understand the principles of light on form which work the same without color. We reintroduce color later on when we're ready to I represent realistic textures and color is a big part of texture. So the student here today has not provided enough saturation for the skin to read as non-translucent and vibrant um, and with full of vitality. This, this is the opposite of what's happening. There's no vitality. This is very translucent for a lot of reasons. The one remedy to getting rid of muddy colors when you are transferring from grayscale to color is to just saturate. Saturate and have light values that represent the skin tone that you need to use. Skin is one of the more desaturated but high value objects or textures you'll ever paint. Skin is lighter. Even African skin tones are actually just dark grays. They're just browns. Every skin tone, unless it really is one of those deeply pigmented, almost purple looking skin tones, um, you need to stay on the lighter realm so that the color can come through. Because brown has red, and red is a little a paler red, looks a lot like a, a really light yellow or a dark yellow, which doesn't exist, kind of like a dark orange, which looks a lot like brown. So it, you want to stay lighter, even in African skin tones. I know it may be tempting to, <clears throat> um, you know, uh, uh, mess around with tons of different kinds of saturations and stay away from uh, color but and just stay comfortable um, but um, what I mean by saturation is that you can sh it's easier to paint a bluish skin tone or a grayish skin tone in a dark environment or all of those artificial colors and try to try the warms one of my students that I worked with for a very long time worked with grayscale for almost a year with me and then it was time to use some color and all they kept using was blues and greens that was the only color they understood the only only two there wasn't a color blindness or anything um, that's because and then instantly as soon as I started noticing a pattern they were too comfortable with their cool values I started assigning pure sunlight high noon daytime grass and fields of grass and and all kinds of high afternoon color saturation in external environments. As soon as I saw that they were, they had no vocabulary or little to no vocabulary in warm values or real saturation, only nighttime values or neons they wanted to work with, I started assigning those and instantly all of the grass started to look like grass and the leaves started to look like leaves. So what's happening is that it could be all of this. It could be you a misunderstood texture, skin as a texture. You don't have a high color vocabulary. You are dependent on grayscale values. You don't understand the saturation every color needs and you don't understand the underlying value behind every color. So that means that if we get a color wheel and we grayscale it, every single one of those colors has a different value. Reds are in the darker, purples are in the darker, oranges and yellows are in the lighter realm. 
and green and, and purple are all in the medium. Um, so or purple is a little bit darker, obviously. Uh, so it could be all of these reasons why your skin looks so bad. And I'm just going to use the word bad. I'm not going to try to use keywords here because I've just been using keywords. This, this, this is not good. It looks translucent as well, which I'd like to touch on. Um, the skin that you're using out here, the, the value that you're using in the environment is shining through the skin. That's why it looks translucent. It looks like she's see-through, like ghostly. When something is see-through, so let me duplicate this exact effect for you. When something is see-through, what we get, and I'm just going to grab her skin tone, any color, honestly. I'm just going to grab any color. This color, oh, you son of a bitch. This color right here is, with translucency, I'm just going to throw it over the selection I made. All right. I'm allowing some of that translucency to come through and I'm just going to make it look like a bubble. So a bubble is like translucent on one side, has a little bit more of the color on the other side. So it's like a translucent bubble that's just floating in the air. The reason why this looks translucent is for one big reason, which is that the, the background color has come through. And it looks like you did that. It looks like you lowered the opacity of the skin layer and let it shine through the, into the background. Let the background color shine through the skin and that's why it looks ghostly. You also have a black background value. You have a lot of unnecessary values sitting around the mouth. You've got very, very localized mid-tone. Lots of shine that makes no sense at all to the environment that's happening or the texture that you're representing. You've got green highlights from a green color, but if it was a green light source, a lot of this would remain, would become green and there wouldn't be any of the peaches coming through. But you're also using peach skin tone? Why? You either have enough warm in your light source to reveal all the peach in the skin, or you have a green light source that creates a monochromatic effect on the skin. One of the biggest fixes is getting rid of that green in the background and only using skin tone. All right, that is going to be the best fix right now for the skin that we have. So I'm going to copy, paste, clean up the background. Can you guys see and hear me okay? Thank you, Ashley. Thank you so much. So what do we see here? We see none of the background value coming through. Do you see that green? I just want you to focus on that only. Focus on no other color. That's why she looked translucent. Translucency is when the color of the background mixes in with the base color of the object. All right, we fixed that. Let's go and fix what's happening in the eyes because you wanted to use a green eye. But before we do that, we can see that in the grayscale version, the eyes that you have are almost as dark as the darkest core shadow. Now, what's the starting value of a, an, a, an, a white eye? I mean, it's just white. We call it the white of the eye. And this is by no means an interpretation of that. Obviously, we're not using pure white but we are going to use some moderation and, and, and raise that value of the white of the eye so it looks generally white to its nearby surrounding uh, values and colors. And the reason why I'm so dumbfounded is because, come on, Photoshop, mother. The reason why I'm so, is because your edges on your nose look great, even though you're outlining a little bit. You're doing well on the general shape of the mouth, the surface shape of the mouth. The gaze looks great. It's focused and crossed inward. Your symmetry is intact. So you're stylizing. You gave yourself license to stylize, but you are in no position to stylize because your stylization ends up looking like uh, bad art. That's when you know stylization has happened too early. 
stylization that still has some entertainment value to it, not an uncanniness. That's what I mean by bad art. Uncanniness, if that is a result of your stylization, you broke a cardinal rule. So this looks extremely uncanny because you have all this realism. You made her look like a, go a ghoulish ghost and then you brought down the darkness in her eye. Let me show you something that'll just stun you guys forever and I honestly I, I want to scare you so that you can um, not do this mistake, make, make this mistake again. Um, so you know what I'm not going to use the picture I intended on using I'm just going to use a representation of it but there was this girl that got trapped in the water for a number of days and she ended up dying and they took a picture of her on her you know last couple hours which is really sad <clears throat> but her eyes actually just looked like this this is just a some media art crap on on Google <clears throat> She had such bloodshot eyes and her circulation was so messed up that her the whites of her eyes turned completely black. This is something we use to represent the villain. This is something we use in art when we, des when we design horror. All those insidious movies and horror movies that you've watched um, have this component in them. You get rid of the white in the eyes to create the sense of une un uneasiness, so, which is exactly what you did in your piece. So you made her translucent, you brought in this weird green that, that was sitting on top of the skin tone. Your values are so washed out, you have no mid-tone, but you have sharp edges for the cast shadow, but no light contrast to prove that there was a light strong enough to cast a shadow like this, but also too weak to allow any kind of defined neighbor value, neighborhood value for the light mid-tones. What? what? You're, you're confusing a ton of rules. And that's how you know stylization was done too early by a student not prepared for it, period. So how do we fix all this stuff? Well, let's start with the characterization problem because it's staring us right in the face. Let's correct some of this. You have a gaze happening. You're trying to tell a story about this character. I appreciate I'm a portrait artist. I appreciate that. I know what it's like to want to focus on the eyes a little bit, but sometimes we hover render and we bring in shadows that just simply do not belong in there. So I'm trying to maintain your narrative the way I do when I critique full illustrations, but I also don't want to, you know, honor your story too much, because at the same time, I don't know if some of these were mistakes, if this was just a kind of blank sort of attempt at a, at a painting. You weren't really investing too much emotion into it. I don't, I can't tell, right? I can't tell if this was something personal to you or something impersonal, if that's the word. So I'm raising this value up and then I'm just going to erase back so that I can get the edge work. But stylization, when you're stylizing, when you're breaking the rules, you need the balls to do it. If you don't have the balls to go full green, don't do it. You're using half of everything. Half of the contrast you're supposed to be using in this light source. Halfway to the amount of reflection to actually make her look like she's metallic. Halfway to the skin tone color. Half of the green. Half of the back. You're mixing mediums everywhere because you were scared of the stylization that you had the balls to try. That makes no sense. Either have the balls to try it or just don't and go for understanding skin tone as it is. Right, and then she's bald, but she's got a dress on. And this just started to look like a 14 day challenge a student desperately wants to make into an illustration. And I've seen that too many times and it's just always led to a, 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 a this could ha if you had focused on one aspect this could have been a successful painting but because you tried to do every last thing under the sun all at once that's why it ended up being a bad painting and by my standards it's about I'm sure it looks amazing to some other student uh, but I want to be strict with you guys and I want to be a little bit more harsh you're not you, greatness is never found with leniency so I want to make sure you guys hit that greatness marker So I'm just selecting this character because we have 
to get that contrast back that I told you you're halfway in, halfway out. Maybe I can try it really quickly with levels. No, you just you're starting cut cut value like where you're cutting off your midtones and where you're cutting off your highlights is so thin and so translucent you're actually not representing any volume. Look at what happens as soon as we allow the sphere to live a little bit and give it its own neighbor value, neighborhood value. So that I'm just talking about the dark half of the sphere and the light half of the sphere. The light's coming from one side. I'm just using a soft brush for this. The eyebrows are also see-through. What were you doing? What were you doing? When people are scrolling past Reddit, they stop and ask, what? When they look at your painting. Because, and only because, not because you're a bad artist or you did a bad job. No, no, no. None of that personal crap. Mostly because, and oh, actually only because, you try to do a million things at the same time. That's why this happened. And you're going to put this in your journal and you're going to say, okay, this is the moment where I tried to do a million things at the same time and just rack embarrass the crap out of me <laughs> in front of everyone in the community. And you're never going to do this again. Okay? What, that green in the back, unless you're going to go for an appropriate green, unless you have a reason to show that much green, stick to more earthy colors, stick to a gray because you, you currently have um, weak edges around the eyes. Eyes, of course, we've learned are the main focal point in any portrait. They carry the portrait. They, are, they carry the entire read. So when you're messing around with too much softness everywhere and not enough edges where they belong, and then all the shadow around the mouth like she had a chocolate bar or something, uh, yeah, yeah you're, you're losing everything that this painting is supposed to have and it's simple it's basics where do we need to focus our contrast i've talked about them before they're just the dark spots that's it easy peasy all right let me give you a quick little is it an anecdote no it's not an anecdote what is it a uh, little lesson oh if you forgot everything if you unlearned everything you learned in kindergarten you would be dysfunctional right because the things that you learn in kindergarten are fundamental to life as a human being what's good what's bad the letters the ABCs it gives you a new profound respect for teachers who teach these things to children who endure the teaching process and, and, t and rear tiny little baby minds the, teaching them the basics of a, a life of a lifestyle so if you are messing around with these basics that you would call, oh, beginner lessons, you are breaking the fundamental like hierarchy that keeps everything looking realistic and functional in a painting. So at no point in your life will you ever, can you ever unlearn what you learned in kindergarten because it's all basics. So the six dark spots sounds like something you learn in kindergarten along with like the ABCs and the three little pig story. But it is, it is why your painting's contrast has completely been thrown off. The six dark spots are very important. You had no contrast where there was supposed to be contrast. But look at all the little lashes that you drew that you threw in. So... Again, we repeat, like, why do we skip the basics? We get bored. We get proud of our skill set. Excuse me. I don't care anymore if I burp or sneeze in class. I'm just, gonna, I'm just one of those professors that <laughs> makes guttural noises in class. Y'all just have to deal with it. You know those professors that carry on a handkerchief and just, like, blow their nose in the middle of class and they're, like, 60 years old? I'm pretty much that nature now. I've learned to just live with it. Sorry, if that, like, recorded in high quality, I'll try to edit it out later. <laughs> um, so these, uh, th this, this student who is skipping all of these fundamentals and wants to make things look all Castlevania and translucent, um, they're really damaging the read in the painting because the contrast, these six dark spots, make all of the medium grays everywhere else feel right. And any, any, let's go back to the eyes, any kind of distortion on the eyes will actually 
make the eyes look sickly. So if you have any any kind of bumps or I mean, it's just going to look like the person's been punched in the face. One thing about skin tone, I'm not really talking about skin tones just yet, I've just made a general wash and I'm trying to talk about your edges and your contrast right now, but one thing about skin tones is do not use this like nasty sepia tone and let that monochromatic value bleed into the white of the eyes. Either make them pure, you know, the color that they're coming from, which if they were blue eyes, make them an off-white blue value or just make them a gray if you don't know what value to use for the eyes. But never, ever black out the eyes and the whiteness there. If you don't have a story to tell that's concrete that you can men like you can describe in a couple sentences, trust me when it comes to the abstractions of visual art, you won't be able to relay that story with art. It'll become even more abstract and more weird. Oh, I wanted some level of um, evilness to the character. No, that doesn't pass. It doesn't fly. You either go for it or you don't. Don't hover on the fence just so you don't make a mistake because that's one of the reasons why students go half in on all, the, all of the rules like this student did. Half in on contrast, half in on skin tone, half in on color wash, half in on green, half in on beige. Um, it's because they don't want to make mistakes so they want to stay safe. You, you made a million mistakes by avoiding mistakes. Went, you went backward by trying to go forward. The first mistake that you made was not establishing a concrete light environment because that threw off the contrast that you were using. And that light environment started off with that really dark background that made no sense. I don't know what you're trying to tell in the story. I don't know what story you're trying to tell at all um, so that I can maybe help you tell it like we did in the last couple illustrations. So, um, you know, is, is, is she supposed to be, like, is this supposed to be deliberate of any kind? We'll see when I record it and upload it. Um, the student usually comments. They usually come back to the scene of the crime. <laughs> And they usually just talk about what they did, so I cannot wait um, for them to come back to the scene of the crime. But look at what happens when I, um, sorry, I don't have the comments up. Look at what happens when I bring it back to go, what was that green doing? And look at how much more we get when we just black out the background. All right. Now, once we've now that we've corrected most of the contrast, we have some kind of dark spot on the nostrils because they are holes in the face. Let's correct the saturation. So now it's going to start looking like skin. You see how I'm working in fragmented layers? That's how I teach. I fragment each layer of the application process. <laughs> Y'all are correct. Um, and then I, I reintroduce each fundamental back forward. So you saw the benefit of correcting your contrast, which was this, and then cleaning up the background and getting rid of that extra color seeping through, making sure none of the background colors seeped inward, and now we're correcting the saturation. And there are many things that make skin look realistic. Um, there's the, 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 the color zones, which I don't like talking, I don't like those tutorials on YouTube that say every face has a green section, a, yet a red section, and a no, no, that's not true. Um, unless they are, it's a bad tutorial, unless they are telling you of the different color zones per complexion or race, um, and per, like male or female, and age group. So race, age group, and gender all affect the kind of saturation and color zones we use on a, on a skin tone. So write that back to me. So what is it? Gender, age, and race all affect the colors we use on skin tone that makes it look realistic. So for females we use more blush, less blush on males, less redness on a female nose unless the characterization requires it, more redness on a male nose. Um, less redness on a, a female, more redness on a female mouth, le less redness on a male mouth, uh, less general saturation on an older character, more general saturation on a younger character. 
um, when you're going into 60s and 70s, complete desaturation, unless characterization dictates you need red cheeks like Mrs. Santa or something. Um, okay, so remember that, please. So for her, what we want to do is, now that we're talking about skin tones, and it's really just a boring topic for me, skin tones, because it's so simple. The more simple the topic, the more boring it is to teach it. Basically, the rule of thumb is the closer you get to highlights, the less you saturate, the closer you get to white. So we're desaturating. The closer we get to it, we're not replacing that highlight with a green value because if the light source was green, it would be monochromatic. Just like, you know, if you've ever been in a club. I don't club, so I don't really know, but I imagine there's like a bunch of disco lights in a club. And sometimes there's just you know, one red or green light, and that red or green light, if it's only red light, everything will turn red that that light is under. So you will be one big red thing if you're under red light. So you can't use spot green or spotlight green. And she's not reflecting a nearby green wall. And if she was reflecting the green wall and she's looking away from the wall, why is she reflecting it so clearly if that was supposed to be the wall being reflected on her highlights? She's not facing the wall. The back of her head would have more green, absolutely. So you were, again, you were layering all kinds of crap. You were trying to do a lot with one thing. We're getting the saturation tool, and we're using it on the mouth, on the lips. But I, I don't like the color we're using here. It's a terrible um, peachy color. I feel like she should be using a more of a, a darker red because that's just what we're left with after we saturate it. So I'm just using a more purpley red and we're throwing it uh, lost my brush. We're throwing it right over here in between the highlight and the cheekbone. I'm also going to thicken her eyebrows just a touch by bringing in that value drop that we need. Really, really don't know what you were doing with this character because you were doing a little bit of everything. That starts in your head. That has nothing to do with your skill. Do you know that a lot of the changes we made today have nothing to do with your skill and everything to do with your thinking? You're just all over the place. And if you had represented your skill only for skill and not for storytelling, then you would have actually shown, shown off your edge skills because you have a lot of them. Your edges are actually really great. Your symmetry is great. The anatomy is good. But none of that could come through because you were all over the place trying to turn a study into a masterpiece. And what, when, when have I ever not bitched about that? <clears throat> Photoshop, you fucking whore. Okay. Because I don't have to assign this as kids, I, because I don't, because YouTube is making me <laughs> decide whether or not this is for kids, and because I have to click no, I'm going to swear as much as I want to now. <laughs> yes, this entire time I have been restraining myself. Alright, so I'm cutting off the eye socket shadow. and trying to show where the top of that sphere up here. Is uh, getting the light, so we're creating a dome. And if we zoom out, the head looks more and more three-dimensional. And you see how this is a straight line? Well, I want this line to be curved because we're showing off the surface curvature of the skull as that shadow wraps around this big basketball. The side of the nose should have more shadow than the top of the nose. And I'm blocking that in from a distance because zooming out really gives me the courage to lay down the blocks that are essential. So I don't have to be scared of ruining my painting. OK, 
Okay, and then we are laying down a little bit of a shadow drop on the space in between the eyebrows. And letting some of this light, and I'm just blocking now, some of the, some of the more like pronounced edges of the anatomy. And again, with your dark spots that are non-existent. What's going on with the eyes? If they were supposed to be like super detailed celestial eyes, why didn't you just zoom up and tell the story through a detailed eye study? Look at, look at how much detail they added here. I can't imagine them zooming out even once during the process. You had such a beautiful face going on and you threw away a lot of the stuff that will um, enhance the beauty you rendered so well. You were going for all the wrong things. You were doing all the wrong things, even though you had the skill set to do all the right things. And that's why there's a lot of people in the audience saying, wow, this pa painting was really good. I couldn't imagine it having mistakes on it. Because you did have something, you were doing something right. But you were tempted and drawn in by the stuff that would never, ever save a painting, which is the detail makes no difference if you add a million little lashes it makes no difference to the success of the piece if you add tiny little specular reflections and a whole cosmos in the in, in the iris it's not it's not going to work trust me how do i know because i used to render every single little hair on the head i'd upload it and i'd wonder why it would get no feedback it would get no, it would impress nobody and I realized because it looks like crap from a, from from the thumbnail looks like shit. All of my art, the thumbnail always looked shitty. And I'm like, how? Why? Why didn't the details that I apply accumulate to a better thumbnail? And then I realized because you weren't painting zoomed out at all, and it was so freaky zooming out that first time. But it, it became very very easy the more I did it, and then my paintings looked better and better. And I barely zoomed in. And that's when I broke out. That's when I started getting good enough that people asked me for tutorials and then I got good at art and started teaching. Well, because I stopped focusing so much on those freaking details that tempt you into thinking, yeah, this is all I need for my, you know, for my future. Build the patience for detail making and such a wasted, so much wasted time detailing. So I'm throwing in some shadows on the lower eyelid. She's got such beautiful lower eyelids, but where you needed shadow, you threw a bunch of highlights. You threw a, you threw a, basically you threw a highlight where there should be a core shadow on the lower half of the eye ball. You're breaking a fundamental. You skipped all of your dark spots. You broke another fundamental. You, you were breaking, you were building and then breaking the foundations as you were going. And you wonder why the building fell. So I'm just blending out parts of these lights that I added in. There's a lot more that needs to be discussed, a lot more that needs to be blended out and rendered, but and I'll try my best to do it all. So the browns in the eyes are so pretty. The browns that you did have, this this like really pretty auburn color. And I just want to exaggerate that. Look at that. That's so pretty. You still got that green, which I'm I, I hate green now. <laughs> you actually <laughs> successfully made me hate the color green. you use this color. I actually hate green now. Like, actually, I'm not going to use green for like a couple of months because of you. I'm joking. I was just trying to put you on the spot. Um, so I'm using a little bit more gray on the whites of the eyes just so they don't look bloodshot or anything like that. It's going to reduce vibrancy, but that's okay. We can bring it back later as we work. And I'm going to throw a shadow on the top half just to, you know, reassert that light source that it's coming from above. So if you wanted to bring in green, if you had a story to tell with green, um, you could have done something with the eye shadow. So when someone is bald, they, they, you know, we can really mess around with makeup. 
because that's the next thing that happens. You could have messed around with some makeup quality. You could have used a green eyeshadow, a yellow pronounced highlighter on top of that eyeshadow that's a bit more vibrant. Some really cool peacock colors. You could have gone for a fully green eye. I mean, what was stopping you from doing that? I mean, that's a bit too green, kind of bad. Usually a green eye is a mix of blue and green. And a little bit of that green on the whites of the eyes. I mean, you could have done a lot if you really had like an itch for green. Okay, but now I'm just making this neutral, not because I, oh, I only like boring neutral portraits. No, I'm making this neutral so that when we do our before, <laughs> you can see exactly how bad your skin tone was before. It made no sense. It was sitting nowhere. It was on so many fences that it was nothing. It became nothing. Okay. And then I'm going to do one, now that I have actual zones, I'm going to start messing around with the levels. <clears throat> and I'm going to bring in this background color and use that to radially drop the value. Again, this paint over today is only about having something to compare to the background. I mean, shit. It's only about having something to compare to the before. All right, so write that back to me. This is all about a comparison to the before. If you feel like this half of the face is now too dark, you can always bring in a secondary light source. You can always do that. No one's going to sue you. No one's going to stop you. You can bring in any color you want. I'm just going to bring in a pale white. So a color might be cool. Anything that'll relieve the object from the shadow on the sides. Alright, if you feel like you need to do that. But I'm just going to fade that color back. Okay, so now that we have something to compare to the before, and again, it's a very, very mild something. I have not done a lot. So look at that before, after. We, that's when we can use the background color to create some shadow. I don't want it to look too muddy. And I'm just going to increase vibrancy and the saturation a touch more. Shift it over into the peaches <clears throat> and merge down. Okay? Are you guys ready for the before? Um, before I do that, <laughs> I'm going to bring in a natural light tint to the painting. So, new layer low opacity, normal brush mode, and I'm going to now bring in that color that I chose, which is just a little bit of yellow, and that'll be the actual color of the light source. And it's shot, it's off shining, like even the eyebrows that get oily, eyebrows are hair, we have oil wherever we have hair, and that is what I'm using to reflect here, a little bit of extra there, a little extra there. some on the mouth, some on the cupid's bow. Honestly, you have too much shine on the mouth. Most of the shine should be on the eye at the top. And then if you want to use that exact color that I chose, which was a yellow-white, more warm, <clears throat> you can bring in a specular highlight to the eye. Excuse me. I'm just using my mouse to stipple it in. Again, this is not about, I don't know what you were doing with the story, so I have no idea what to do in order to help you tell the story. But now it's at least closer to looking like something. I just want something to compare to the before because now we're no longer in the middle of everything until we become nothing. Now we have something before. That's why I said it looks like a ghost. 
after. Do you see how translucent it looked? If this was the effect you were going for, good job. But if this is not what you were going for, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> If it's supposed to be a ghoul, okay. But even then, why are you painting a ghoul? Who told you to paint a ghoul? <laughs> this is your 14 day challenge. Why did you turn it into a ghoul? It's, Halloween is over. Where is, where, finish your 14 day challenge first. Paint, get into hair. Um, if you were painting a ghoul, why didn't you just go full ghoul? Why didn't you write a story about a ghoul? first and then go into the ghoul. Bitch got revived. Welcome back from the dead, sweetie. <laughs> okay, so who is this artist? So we want to just like look at them right now, bring them to the front of the class. Who are you? <laughs> Why did you do this? I want some answers. She painted me right now. <clears throat> it was this Megan? These before and afters give me whiplash. Go for hair. Okay, so what have we learned today? If this was an accidental ghoul, um, <laughs> uh, you did it wrong. Because for you to use the green of a ghoul, let's talk about it, because there's a possibility the student is innocent of all charges. <laughs> But, um, but let's talk about, uh, you know, ghoul Disney. No, 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 no. Um, bad guy Disney. Okay, so we googled bad, bad guy Disney. Um, not a good answer uh, here. But let's see the, these, these uses of green here. Forget this dude. <clears throat> green, 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 green. Lots of that ghoulish, monstrous green. If you wanted green, that is the color they go for when they're trying to make someone look evil. They get that green. I don't even know who the heck these characters are, but it's it's a, it's a it's a rule. There's always green on the bad guy, of some kind. Any kind of magic that they have. I forget if evil Jafar, genie Jafar. No, he's red. I don't know why I remembered him as green. I don't know why, maybe another movie. Um, so, what other uh, bad guy has a little bit of green? A Hades from Disney. Um, no, no green, just blue. I swear I remember green though. I remember green on him or some kind of turquoise. Maybe I remember this color. But it's, it's a derivative of that color. Maleficent's entire color is green. She's just a green colored. So if you were going for ghoul, again, I hate your use of green. <laughs> you could have actually used green. But look at what happens when we saturate. You actually used almost no green in here. So you, you weren't... The actual source color for this value was a completely different hue, H-U-E, hue. You were so inconsistent. You were on the fence with every major, um, you know, uh, uh, faction, I guess. I can use that smart word. Cool. No, it's not really going to help. But yeah, I guess Googling ghoul will help. It's always some kind of green feces color, really. <laughs> and that's what we want to do. That color is disturbing. It's earthly. It's the color of rot and decay. And then we have, um, like, one of the more, like, an actual ghoul in League of Legends. This is here. It's got a lot of green. And then we have another green in League of Legends, which is, um, what's his name, Zack, but his, his is more of a, like a, 
a chemical green. It's it's not a ghoul green, but it is pretty scary. But it's more of a jelly, gel jello. But it's got that green in there too, because he's got that ghoul face. Zach Efron. <laughs> he's a ghoul too. He looks like a ghoul, Jesus Christ. Um, and then we have this fabulous man. All right. <clears throat> Any questions? Oh yeah, Rasputin from the animated movie Anastasia. What if the artist intended for the character to be in a green light environment? How can we make the character look like it? Do you want to know what happens in a green light environment with a green light? I talked about it. This is what happens. The entire object becomes green. Everything is green because the light source in the area is green. The light source not only gives off its value, but it gives everything its color. Okay. <clears throat> um, maybe he or she will be offered a plea deal. <laughs> You're so funny. Um, <laughs> Using the color of the light environment as bounce color instead of the background helps with avoiding translucency, right? Sorry about copy pasting from that's okay. Using the color of the light environment as bounce color instead of the background helps with avoiding translucency. No, 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 no. The reason why it was translucent was because there was green in the background and there was some green in the highlight in these areas. It looked like she was slowly disappearing because some of her skin tone was there. This is an accidental effect. We were seeing some of the highlight in the background as the light shone through the character into the background. We're seeing that light color shine back. This was subsurface scattering is what you were painting. And we made her look opaque because none of the background color is now visible on her. If it is, we aren't rotated enough. It's on the back of her head that any background color, if at all, would be shining on her. So when you use bounce light, you're using the color of the nearest object if it's bouncing off the nearest object. If it's going to be the background for some reason, then that's going to work. But usually we always have some kind of stem back to the light source color as the source of all things. There's a red jacket that they're wearing. That red jacket will reflect back on their face. <clears throat> that dude in the mermaid suit going to copy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Delete the video before <laughs> Aquaman is gonna <laughs> sue me. So is the student here today? Um what if the artist for the character being a green light environment? Okay, so that's it for today. I don't think I have enough voice to cover all this, but I would like to congratulate this artist for almost completing their 14 day challenge. Um they are uh, day 13. I think this is a really long challenge. I think they're like moving into like a year's worth um, of work. <clears throat> but, I mean, everyone works at, at, at their own pace. I'm not sure because I tried to find their day one and I found one year challenge kind of thing. I might be mistaken. Um, you've done well. Squint your eyes, though, and you can see some value sharing on the sides of the nose. I'm just going to correct that really quickly. Whoa, Jesus. Um, so why is that a problem? Well, because you're using values that don't represent, that represent depressions on something that is supposed to be represented with elevation values. All we have to do is get rid of you're, 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 You've got so much going on in the nose. It looks like a really bad nose job because there's just so much going on. The less we see of this general area, the better it's painted. You've got too much makeup. This character looks like they have tons of makeup on, so I want you to ease up on the shadow. You have a lot of contrast going in, so you've used a lot of black everywhere. The cast shadow almost looks like a mustache. Um, if you do use contrast anywhere, use it only on the eyes and stop overdoing it on the mouth. You really only need the dark spots, which is just the two corners. And you only need shadow on the nostrils. Everything else can be a step down. Don't use contrast on the ears. They throw off the read of the eyes. And then 
the entire sphere itself is not a it's not a clean sphere. We have shadows on the top of the head and no separation between the lower half of the canvas and everything else. Always zoom out to assess whether or not your values represent a successful functional volumetric shape. If it doesn't look like a sphere zoomed out, it's not going to look like a head. Write that back to me. So before, after, a little bit too much going on. And then for this one, I'm not sure why on day seven you're still blocking and not blending. I don't know if this is just a process shot, but when you're having issues with 14 day challenge, completing 14 day challenge submissions, don't do the 14 day challenge yet. Work on one painting as long as it takes to finish it. Learn how long it takes for you to finish a painting. If rendering a painting is too much work, take it by landmarks or, or, or stepping stones. What you want to just get, just get to successful blocking and then get to successful blending and then get to blocking details such as eyes, nose, mouth and then get to combining all that together and then you'll have finished one portrait and then do that a couple more times and then challenge yourself with doing that all in one day for 14 days in a row. If you can't even finish a face, you cannot start the 14 day challenge. Okay? <clears throat> I think it's a good thing to interrupt. So someone asks, I'm not going to read their name. Actually, I'm going to read their name, lesbian boy. <laughs> Do you think it's a good idea to flip the painting vertically? I don't know why you guys embarrass me with your names. Just use your goddamn actual names. Like Benjamin Paulson. Thank you. Or or Hannah P. Or Megan. Alright? No Natsue Shan Weibo. Nay, I'm joking. I'm joking. Or Art Latte. Art Latte is good. Hannah. Um, anyway, Lesbian Boy asks, do you think it's a good idea to flip the painting vertically? I think it's good to interrupt your viewfinder as much as possible. I think it's good to break your tunnel vision whenever you can, because we can get tempted to work when, in our comfort zone for too long. That's where mistakes happen. Um, so, uh, so yes, it's, it is acceptable. Uh, to flip the canvas vertically, as long as you're at least flipping the canvas horizontally and not just flipping the canvas vertically, because that makes no sense. Why would you make it upside down? <laughs> no, it's okay. You can meet, you can keep your not sweet Sean name, whatever you want to do. <laughs> I am judging you for identifying as a mango. Uh, thank you everyone for coming today. I'm sorry for the late start. I don't feel very well, but I'm happy that we still got to complete our meet today. Um, if you guys want to submit work for Critique Hour, go to istabrak.com and click on the Reddit icon to join us. Portrait Studio is still on sale. You can get it on the store. I didn't use it today because I didn't really focus on cash shadows. I didn't have time. But it's a reference uh, software that helps you build anything you think of, anything you dream of for your illustrations. It's an educational tool. You have 14-day challenge friend friendly portrait busts that you can rotate. You have control over the camera, the light, um, and the model. You have posable mannequins. You have uh, environment assets to use to build an entire environment scene. There is a lot you can do with Portrait Studio, and it is on sale for the rest of the month at 50% off. It will be on sale again around the Christmas holiday, right after the 19th, as soon as the 19th hits and we'll do our last class, Porsche Studio will be on sale, um, possibly even into January for those New Year's resolutions for anyone who wants to work on their art, perfect their work, and have a little assistant on the side for reference generation, Porsche Studio will be on sale again at the end of December, but it's still on sale until the end of this month. If you want to join as a patron and support the channel, you can do so even as a $1 patron. If you'd like to subscribe for a higher amount and get um, educational material in turn, you can do so as well and join us for apprenticeship on Discord where you can get educational material back as well as, which means all my personal work as well as time lapse, critique hour for all of your homework and monthly homework assignments. It's a really relaxed but still high accountability um, uh, homework style, class style. 
I don't badger you guys. I don't constantly annoy you guys about finishing work. I check in a couple times a month and you finish work according to your skill level and your uh, stream of input. <clears throat> but it is still homework. Homework is st still has a due date and your work is still critiqued. So it's a nice little uh, middle ground between critique hour and private tutoring. There is a challenge currently up on uh, the, the Reddit community. Scroll down to see it. Um, it is pinned at the top, the 2019 Holiday Challenge. If you're interested in getting challenged and finishing something, the theme will be due. This theme will be due on the 19th. And that's it, everyone. Thank you for coming today. I'll see you guys on Tuesday the 26th at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Bye, guys.